Hello and welcome back. So as you can see, we're in a slightly different environment today. We're actually inside a Tesla Model 3. I figured it'd be pretty interesting to kind of go over the usability of this car. Oftentimes when we think about digital interfaces, we think about it in terms of a mobile app or a desktop website, but what if you take it in a slightly different context? Today we're primarily going to be looking at this digital dashboard that's right next to the driver's seat. I'm going to be using Jacob Nielsen's 10 Principles of Interaction Design to do a heuristic analysis. So think of it as kind of like guidelines to gauge the usability of a product. I'm also going to be sharing some different perspectives based on two personas. So me as an amateur driver versus a more long-term driver like my husband. For safety reasons, the person who's actually going to be driving is going to be my husband. So don't worry, we're not taking our eyes off the road. All right, let's begin. Visibility of system status, providing feedback to the user so they know what's going on while using the product. One of the key differences between Tesla and other cars is the giant touchscreen monitor in the middle. For either expert or novice drivers, having to rely on a screen with no tactile buttons can mean that errors are just way more likely. As the car is moving, there is a higher level of precision required to hit the control that you want. And it's harder to simply feel your way around without taking your eyes off the road. Your fingers can slip trying to tap on an area of the screen. And not only is this troublesome, but I feel like it's actually quite dangerous if you're diverting your attention. At the very least, Tesla should consider including haptic feedback on the monitor. But for many car manufacturers, the adoption of using touch screens over physical buttons seem to be the growing trend. And that's likely because it's more cost effective to code UI, despite the obvious safety concerns. I feel like the volume of the turn signals is actually a little lower than in other cars I've driven in, and you can't adjust it. And because the dashboard is also in the middle of the car, I now do not see the actual signal in front of me either. There have been one or two occasions where my husband pointed out that I had signals in the wrong direction without realizing it. Also, both me and my husband do agree that it'd be helpful to have a blind spot detector on the side mirrors, which you can find in most modern cars. But instead, it seems like the Tesla really wants you to just look at the monitor to see what's nearby. I still prefer relying on my mirrors. One of my favorite features is when the car lets you know how close you are to other vehicles or barriers when you're parking. The feedback appears in displaying the actual distance you are from bumping into something and the color changes as you get closer and also you get some audio feedback from the car. The closer you are, the faster the beeps you hear will be. Super helpful for newbies like me who suck at parallel parking. Match between system and real world. The design should use words, concepts, or visual language familiar to the user. Tesla actually does a pretty good job at this. The screen literally shows your car in relation to all the things surrounding it, such as pedestrians, cones, cyclists, other cars, and even things like road signs and traffic lights. And the 3D models here are very recognizable. Sometimes it does glitch out and can't pinpoint the exact location of some of these items though. And to be honest, I don't notice it much when I'm driving since I'm not looking at the screen, but expert drivers seem to have better peripheral vision. User control and freedom. Ease of exiting or undoing actions. When I first started driving the Tesla, there was actually a glitch with the side mirrors, which they've since fixed, thank goodness, but it was definitely really scary when I was trying to merge onto a highway only to find out that somehow the car has auto-adjusted my mirrors. Unlike with other cars I've been in where you can control your mirrors from buttons on your door handle, there isn't really an easy way to do this in the Tesla without tapping on the screen and doing it there. At a certain point, you gotta ask, when does minimalism impede functionality and usability? When you want to exit out of the main control panel, you can also just re-tap the icon that opened it, so this way users don't even need to look for a cancel button. You can also have the Tesla give off an audio beep if you're past the speed limit by a certain amount. It's really helpful if you're trying not to get a ticket on local roads, but it might be a little less useful if you go faster on the highway along with the flow of traffic and you keep getting dinged. Consistency and standards. Design of the product should be consistent with industry or platform standards. I haven't driven too many cars in the past, but I'm used to having the gear shifter in the center between the driver and the shotgun seat. 
The Tesla's is on a stick to the side of the steering wheel, which my husband says is actually more in line with how it's designed in larger vehicles, such as trucks and vans. The way you park, however, is unique to the Tesla. So instead of moving the gear shift all the way upwards, you can just push the gray button on the side. But learnability really isn't too difficult since you use these controls all the time anyway. I also didn't know that you can open the trunk by tapping the word trunk on the screen. The affordance doesn't really seem obvious since it doesn't look like a button or a link. Most of the cars that I've been in have a physical button on the side of the driver's seat to do that. The icons for basic car functions are designed pretty similarly to what you would normally see in other vehicles. The main difference being they're not all visible to you by default. And with the main menu having so many features, sometimes it's just really annoying trying to find the control you need when there's so much cognitive load. One of my biggest gripes with the Tesla to this day is their approach to door handles. To exit the car, you have to press a button on the handle, and then to enter the car, you have to use two fingers to push one side inwards and pull the other side outwards. Looks sleek, but seriously lacking in affordance. Most of our passengers have struggled with it even after having been in our car before. The outside door handle has been terrible for people with mobility issues, and not knowing how to exit the vehicle is a serious safety concern. Error prevention. Prevent errors from happening to the user. This can include mistakes because a user wasn't paying attention, or if the user misinterpreted how the product is supposed to work. Again, I'm personally a fan of the Tesla's audio feedback. It automatically beeps when cars nearby are too close or if you need to slow down based on how far away they are from you. And this can apply for both expert and novice drivers. Many people assume that when you turn on autopilot on the highway, you can basically go to sleep. But when you turn on autopilot, the car actually still needs to ensure that you have your hand on the steering wheel since self-driving hasn't been perfected yet. And after a while, if it detects that your hands are off the wheel, it'll start flashing blue at the top as a soft warning. The more time elapses, the faster it flashes until it eventually starts beeping. Recognition rather than recall. Users shouldn't have to rely on memory to remember how to use your product. I do appreciate that Tesla often pairs icons with labels in the larger control panel. Sometimes though, even for experienced drivers, it can be difficult to remember how Tesla categorized some of their controls, which can differ from our own mental models. While there isn't going to be a perfect IA or information architecture out there, I wonder if Having something like a search feature might be helpful than having to tap into multiple screens and manually scanning for the right button, especially since a lot of these configurations already have clear text labels that theoretically should be keyword searchable. When Tesla updated their UI somewhere during winter 2021, the layout changed quite a bit. The bottom navigation removed a lot of the icons that were previously there, and even when you expand to view all controls, the positioning of the design elements have moved. While this might not be a huge deal in websites and mobile apps, and probably is more of an inconvenience and annoyance for the user, I was concerned about it from a safety perspective for drivers. Yes, most of the more detailed controls when you open the car icon should probably be fiddled with when you're not actively driving, but things like adjusting the defogging mechanism or windshield wipers have also moved behind the car icon. Flexibility and efficiency of use. Letting expert users speed up their interactions through shortcuts and other more efficient options. The Tesla, like many other cars these days, allow you to adjust audio volume from the steering wheel. For expert and novice drivers alike, it's a handy feature and way better than trying to reach across on the giant monitor. It also lets you adjust the speed of cruise control and you can give voice commands. Another one of my favorite features is the Tesla also allows for multiple user profiles. So different drivers can set their own preferences such as their seat and mirror positions instead of having to manually adjust it every time. For some reason though, the rear view mirror is not auto adjusted so I always need to remember to manually do it when I change the driver profile. Aesthetic and minimalist design. Making sure the interface focuses on the essential design elements needed for the user to complete their goals. In the Tesla, the speedometer is just a number, which is a much faster and precise read for both amateur and expert drivers alike. 
A traditional speedometer shows you how fast you're going at a scale, but sometimes I only want to know if I'm within the speed limit. Generally, I appreciate that the Tesla has pretty clean and simple iconography with a very legible font, but they can probably introduce an accent color here and there. Since everything is pretty much grayscale, it all kind of blends in. For example, I would love it if the GPS used more color to let me know which lanes I should stay on. But sometimes more tech may not necessarily be a good thing. If I want to open the glove box, it's controlled by the control panel, which covers up the map if I'm driving. Not sure if it was a decision purely for aesthetics so that the compartment looks flush with the rest of the car, or maybe it was to prevent burglary, but either way, it's still pretty annoying having to rely on a screen to do something so simple. Help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. Let users know what the problem is and how to get themselves out of their pickle. Overall, the Tesla is pretty good at letting you know when you've messed up. If your passengers have no seatbelt on, there is pretty clear visual feedback. And the Tesla has many audio alerts, some of which I've already covered. You can also turn on a chime so the car lets you know if the light has turned green or if you're diverting from your lane. Though, to be honest, even for an expert driver, you may sometimes hear a chime or a beep and not know what caused it once you start turning audio alerts on for everything. But the volume does increase with the level of danger it recognizes. Help and documentation. How easy is it to find help and how digestible is the documentation? The Tesla does have a library of tutorial videos, so you don't have to carry a manual around. And like I said, most of the controls are pretty well labeled. While many people were intrigued by the car when it first came out, I still kind of wish you don't need to refer to documentation when operating a vehicle. Imagine if you had to read a manual every time you got a car rental. It would take a while to pull out of the lot. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever been in a Tesla, either as a passenger or a driver, and what your thoughts are on the experience. Until next time, bye.